Okay, I'm going to show you how to uh, make a page that's sort of fixed and sort of liquid, and it's a very popular way to make a page these days so that the content stays fixed inside a certain area, but that little area or big area can move back and forth when you change the size of the web. So I just thought I'd show you some examples. So like Missouri S&T, see there's this area where all the content in here is fixed, but the gray area is actually the background and you see as you expand the browser the background uh, the page the fixed stuff doesn't change but the fixed stuff does move within the browser so it's kind of fixed in here but it's it's uh, liquid within in the context of the browser Apple page is another page that does it um, they don't all do this but um, Dell does for example, you can see it. the inside's fixed, but it moves around. This other very famous page, Make Media TV, stays fixed in there. So um, how do you do that? How do you make it fixed on one hand, but then make something else fla flexible on the... Um, on the other hand and well the first basic answer to that is you make something called a wrapper which is a big square that everything's going to fit inside and that square will be liquid so it can move back and forth in the page but everything inside it will remain fixed so what I did was I made this example page and I'll show it to you on the web uh, and it goes so you can see it's fixed, but then you can, uh, when you change your browser, it uh, fix the area, the wrapper will move back and forth within the browser, but everything inside it stays fixed. So here's the example page in Dreamweaver, and let's, let's look at the code. All right, now first of all, remember uh, what we learned about CSS and, and um, how it relates to the HTML. And so what we did was we make, see how simple the HTML code is. There's just a, an ID for the header, navigation, menu. Then I put these break tags in, which made it, which made it work. And um, then I put this, uh, um, and, and that was just simply because it was at the end of the content to fill out the content to make it look larger instead of typing more letters. That just means line break, by the way. And then we have this footer tag also at the end and I put a little text in there where I got this beginning site to start out with give people credit alright and so there's the IDs and then here's the characteristics well first of all let's note that everything is nested within the wrapper so here's the header here is the navigation here is the main and here is a footer all of its nested inside this wrapper so one really important thing that'll screw you up from the get-go is if you put absolute, if you say position absolute for header, navigation, main, footer, it won't work. And the reason is because when you say absolute position for some part of that page, it will put it exactly there no matter any context, no matter what tags it's in, embedded inside or anything like that. So you have to not have position. If you have position absolute underneath stuff, it's going to uh, screw up this design. So let's start off with this. We have this uh, different kinds of tag of uh, selector for CSS, which you can actually take an HTML element like body, and you can give it CSS properties. And so that's one thing. As a, instead of just having an ID with properties, you can actually give a an actual. Um, HTML element properties. The only thing we've done with the body is we made the background color gray. That's why when you look at the page you see this gray around the outside. All right, and then the wrapper, I made it a thousand pixels wide. Just thinking, well, most screens these days, thousand pixels, uh, they can handle a thousand pixels. And this is made specifically for a computer screen. Obviously it would fail miserably if it was a mobile screen. That's why you have different style sheets. Uh, but anyway, not enough with that. So uh, then we say the ca the color is, is um, white. We say the border. Now this is an interesting border tag. It's it's a shortcut because you could say border style is uh, or border width is thin, border style is solid, border color, etc. But there's a shortcut, and if you put them in a certain order, you can just have one one border declaration. Um, so anyway, so then it has the margin at the top is fixed is is 50 pixels, uh, 
The margin the bottom is 50 pixels, so it's always going to be like that. But here's the characteristic, here's the thing that makes it liquid is that the margin to the left is set to auto and the margin to the right is set to auto and that means automatically change the margin <clears throat> to make the page centered as um, you move the browser. Padding zero, so the padding just simply means that all of the things that are nested within the wrapper will go all the way to the exact edge of the wrapper. There's no space between the wrapper and the and those uh, three different divisions that are inside it. And then the header has a background color. It has a little border around it and it has some padding uh, which 15 pixels and we'll talk about the box model later but padding just so you'll know for now it means this distance between this the um, edges of the division and the text inside so there's this little space so it's not right up against the edge so that's what padding means there uh, margin is zero margin is another line that goes outside and we'll explain that more uh, when we talk about what's called the box model because there's all these different things the margin the padding all these things that surround um, the outside of the different divisions uh, and then the navigation, we have the margin set to 25%. We could actually set it more specifically, but I have it set to a percentage for now just to make it a, a, a little simpler. But obviously the percentage doesn't change because it's fixed inside that the wrapper. And then it has these other things about the margin top. Uh, this little float left thing, that's uh, kind of co complicated, um, but it just means that in the flow of the page, when you get to the navigation part, it needs to have a page break and move to the left. Uh, and so that's why it shows up where it does over here on the left. So those are all just characteristics. These are just... Um, declarations associated with each of these IDs um, within the style sheet. So that's how you can make a kind of a, a wrapper that makes your page kind of fixed but kind of liquid and it's a pretty popular thing to do these days.